Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck and it's time for Rakdos Midrange, a deck that's built to leverage the Mill metagame as we're playing a bunch of cards with the escape ability. So if the opponent is actively trying to mill us, we've got access to a bunch of cards for free and one of those is Kroxa, Titan of Death's Hunger, which we can first play for 2 mana to make the opponent discard a card and then later we can escape it out of the graveyard for 4 mana by exiling 5 other cards and then we get access to a 6-6 six -six, which upon entering the battlefield or attacking makes the opponent discard a card and potentially lose three life as well and then we've got two copies of Ox of Agonas, a 5 mana 4 2 that when it enters the battlefield makes us discard our hand, and then we draw three cards, so a perfect to play one empty handed, and we can escape it for just double red by exiling eight other cards from our graveyard, and then it escapes with a plus one plus one counter on it, and by exiling that many cards from our graveyard, we can also potentially temporarily shut down synergies like the Soaring Thought Thief or Thief's Guild Enforcer, and we make the opponent spend seven mana on their into the story as opposed to just four, so definitely has a lot of advantage in the mill matchup and then taking a look at the rest of the deck we've got a ton of spot removal so the deck is definitely geared towards beating creature decks it's going to struggle a lot more against ramp decks that can go over the top since we don't have the fastest clock at one mana we've got some removal with blood chief's thirst killing a creature with converted mana cost two or less and we can kick it for four mana total to kill any creature or planeswalker instead then at 2 mana besides Croxa, we also have the full playset of Mire Triton as a 2 mana 2 1 with Death Touch that mills us for 2 and gains 2 life. So in the matchups where the opponent isn't actively milling us, we can still fuel or escape cards. And then we've got more removal with Heartless Act, killing a creature without a counter on it, or potentially removing 3 counters from a creature instead. Two copies of Skyclave Shade, which we can also replay out of the graveyard thanks to Landfall, so also shines against the mill decks. And then we've got two copies of Shredded Sails, which is a bit of a weird inclusion, but it can still potentially take out some of the flying creatures out of the rogues deck, and it can also destroy artifacts, which is key against the Gruel Adventure deck, as we can take out cards like the Great Henge, which can also be a problem for the deck, and cards like Ember Cleave, of course, a big threat for the deck as well. And then at 3 mana we've got Bonecrusher Giant, we can first Adventure Stomp to deal 2 damage, and then get access to a 4-3. We've got the full playset of Timur it Calls the Dead, which is the other way we have of filling our graveyard to enable our escape synergies, and make a few zombies in the process. Mire Triton also a zombie, so can also help with the last chapter as we get to scry and gain a bunch of life. And then we've got two copies of Elspeth's Nightmare, which shines especially in the mirror match, as we first get to destroy a creature with power 2 or less. Then on the second chapter we make the opponent discard a non-creature non-land card from their hand, and on the final chapter we exile the opponent's graveyard to potentially get rid of any escape creatures. And then at 4 mana we've got two copies of Hagra Mauling, which we can also play as a tap land, and otherwise it can be used to destroy a creature. Two copies of Liliana, Waker of the Dead, which can also take advantage of all the self-mill effects, as the minus 3 gets powered up, giving a creature minus x minus x until end of turn, where x is the number of cards in our graveyard. And the plus 1 ability makes each player discard a card, which can complement our discard game plan with Croxa, and can potentially set up an escaped Ox of Agonas if we're empty-handed anyway. And then we've got two copies of Rankle Master Pranks, a 3-3 with Flying and Haste that has a bunch of abilities if it hits the opponent, and one of those is to make each player sacrifice a creature, which also has good synergies with our zombie tokens from Timurat Calls the Dead, and our Skyclave Shade which we can easily replay out of the graveyard. And then of course our two copies of Ox of Agonas, and then going over the mana base we also have four copies of Shatter Skull Smashing, another land we can potentially play as a removal spell, and then four copies of Fabled Passage which also helps us fill the graveyard for escape, four copies of Temple of Malice as we don't have the pathway in Black Red yet, four mountains, seven swamps and one Castle Lochthwain as another potential card draw engine. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with... A fine opening hand, double triton means we'll get to mill quite a bit, hopefully hit one of our escape creatures. And then smashing one we can maybe play it, the other one maybe use as removal. And then temple to scry towards more action. And bone crusher giant should be okay here. A cheap removal spell if we need it, and a 4-3 can apply a bit of pressure. And we're up against mono reds, okay. So I am liking Stomp from Bonecrusher here. Keep the Thirst to maybe kill a bigger creature later. A 
No robber is fine. So I can play Triton to jump in front of robber. If they kill it, that's okay. Or I could just play Bonecrusher Giant by taking three from the smashing. Yeah, it's probably better here. I guess the problem is we'll be a bit light on black mana, so I wouldn't be able to play two black spells next turn. So in that sense, playing Triton plus Temple is a bit more tempting. And then I probably want to mill before I scry. And then I'll only have four cards in hand. I guess I'm fine if my opponent mills the Swamp here, but I also wouldn't mind drawing the Swamp necessarily as a pain-free land. So we'll see if they get rid of Triton or not. Trade is fine. And then we can play Thirst, play Bonecrusher. Don't necessarily have to kill Robber, but killing creatures makes it more difficult for the opponent to play Amber Cleave, which is the scariest card here. If they had Annex, we would have seen it. They could be holding Torbrain, which is a reason to maybe hold Thirst so we can play it kicked on Torbrain. But we can maybe leverage one of our smashings. Intimidator. And that's it. So we'll play Triton, see what we mill. Would love to hit one of our escape creatures. And there we go, there's Croxa. Giant can attack, fine with the trade. And then I can play one smashing tapped, and then next turn I'll be able to escape Croxa. Plenty of cards in Graveyard, and Fable Passage will add one more. Against Mono Red, I think the plan of just kind of trading resources is a good one, because we should have the better late game. Storm kills Triton. That's a nice trade for the opponent. Nightmare doesn't have any targets at the moment. So, is there a need to play Passage? I could hold it. But I guess just playing it and not sacrificing it yet could be the play. And then I want to leave creatures in the graveyard, preferably, for my Timurid Calls of Dead that I could pick up in the future. Gets rid of a land. So they could still have an Amber Cleave in hand, for all we know. And yeah, for points attacking here, I'll take it. They could also just have another Stomp they want to use to finish off Croxa. But when we have Smashing in hand, we can easily get rid of the Giants. Intimidator doesn't die to my Nightmare, unfortunately. So, if my opponent has another Bone Crusher in hand, they could pump, block, and then Bone Crusher to finish off Croxa. So let's see, how much can we smashing for? I can smashing for x equals 4, which is not enough to kill both Intimidator and Giant, but it is enough to kill Giant, and then I can Thirsty Intimidator. That seems fine. So let's, I guess, just Thirsty Intimidator first for 1 mana, and then attack. Get the opponent's last card which was a smashing. And then we'll smashing the giants. It does require me to fetch here. All right, so we're both top decking, but we've got a croc sign play. My opponent doesn't. Just a land, so my opponent's gonna take nine here. And yeah, they're pretty much dead. Can't think of too many top decks that get them out of it. Alright, sweet, so we managed to outgrind Monored. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. 
we'll start with Temple of Malice. And do I need another mountain? Yeah, I think I'll take it. Means I can hold on to my smashing for a bit longer. And we do want to get up to 5 mana eventually for Ox of Agonas. Gilded Goose, I could kill with my Thirsts. Don't really have a turn 3 play lined up. So I could also decide to just play Shade for now to start applying a bit of pressure and then... We'll see if we want to Thirst the Goose or maybe the next creature they play. So your opponent appears Mono Green. Garrick's Harbinger is potentially a problem right now. It's gonna be a Scavenging Ooze instead, also a card we definitely need to get rid of. So find target for Thirst. And a Lobstruck Beast is gonna make a 1-1 token. Alright, so Shredded Sail's potential answer to the Great Henge could also kill the Goose. Although, currently doesn't have any food, so it's not the biggest threat. So I'm tempted to just kill Ooze, attack with Shade. I guess I can attack first, even. I'm fine with the trade, since we can just replay Shade once we play our Swamp here. And maybe if we kill the Ooze first, my opponent doesn't make that trade. Alright, so we had a nice mana efficient turn. And then Rankle could also synergize with our Shade nicely. Alright, Hagra Mauling could take care of the Beast. I think we're just gonna Rankle. And then I'm fine if they jump with a Goose, otherwise I can make them sacrifice a creature. Which I guess also would have resulted in them sacrificing the Goose. So they could potentially play 4 mana Henge, instead their land comes into play tapped. They might have a fight spell here, ran through. Fair enough. I don't really have to kill the beast, because the main thing beast does is enable Great Henge, and we've got an answer for it. And I'm gonna have to eventually discard sails if I'm gonna play Ox, so I kinda want him to play Henge. So maybe the play is just play my passage and pass a turn. It does mean I miss out on a shade attack, but it might be worth it here. And kind of hope my opponent plays Henge. And there it is. So now... I guess that resolves. And then, as soon as I get the chance, I'll kill the Henge. Alright, so now I'm fine killing the beasts. So we can start attacking with Shade. And so that they can't easily play a second Henge. Don't want to sack Fable Passage as it's a way for us to replay Shade out of the graveyard. Ooh, Feasting Troll King. That could be an issue too. Another shade, so I guess we'll just play Ox here. And discard shade, which we can replay next turn. And Heartless Act will be a fine answer for the Troll King. Smashing. Yeah, we're getting to the point where we can smashing for X equals 6, so I don't hate it. No attacks. A Wicked Wolf can sack a food token and takes out Ox. Wicked Wolf definitely a problem, but now that they got rid of a food token they won't be able to bring back the Troll King at least. Got seven cards in graveyard, so we're pretty close to escaping Ox once we play Triton. For this turn, gonna kill the Troll King. I guess my opponent forgot to attack with it. And 
and then hit for three. And I can either play Triton or I can get back a shade and play it with Kicker. Also, I guess playing a 3-1 is still okay. So let's play the Triton, see what we can find. Maybe I'll end up escaping a Croxa if I mill it here. I don't. So, 10 cards in Graveyard. Yeah, I mean, I could also just play the Smashing and escape an Ox and draw some cards. That might not be a bad idea. Sure. And then I can also play the Shade, but I don't have to make that decision right away. So get rid of everything that we don't care about. Which is, I guess, everything but Shade. Could have also sacked Fable Passage first. To maybe keep an extra creature in the graveyard, which is useful for Timur it Calls the Dead. Found a Croxa. Could play Croxa to make him discard. Or I can play the Shade. I guess we'll play the Shade for now, since my opponent still has two cards in hand anyway. Ooh, Trail of Crumbs could be an issue. And the Troll King comes back and makes him potentially draw three with Trail. So the Croxa game plan's not looking too great at the moment. Thirsts. So I could shred its sails to kill the food token. And then I can kill the Wicked Wolf if they don't make it indestructible. Otherwise I can just kill the Troll King. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Or I could keep sails for a potential henge. I think I just killed the food token now. Opponent lets it go. And then I could Thirst with Kicker the Troll King and then just attack. And if they block with the Wolf, I can finish it off with the Bone Crusher Giants. And I don't want to send the Triton. Alright, so Wicked Wolf down, but my opponent has a lot of cards in hand. Giant opportunity to make three more food tokens and a backup wolf. At least they can't get any value from Trail this turn. Simmered calls it dead. Alright, so let's start with Croxa to get my opponent's last card. Which was a goose. And then we'll hit for two. And then I probably just escape Croxa. Although that does mean getting rid of either Ox or Shade. Or I can play Timurt Calls It Dead. And play Giants. Maybe that's better. And I have to get rid of 
a valuable creature here if I want to make a zombie. We are getting the opponent pretty low, but they could of course start sacking food to gain life as well. I feel like the shade isn't going to be super impactful, or I might just play the one kicked. But the three one's probably not going to do a whole lot for me. And then I'll just play giant because I want to mill more stuff. So I can escape Ox without having to get rid of my second Shade and Croxa. Another Beasts. So they've got a lot of power and toughness on defense now. Croxa can deal three to them. Get rid of another Timur Calls the Dead. So I'm very close to burning my opponent out with Croxa triggers. Let's see, how many cards in Graveyard? 11. So, wondering if I should maybe consider attacking first, but I don't really have any great attacks. So yeah, we'll just play Croxa, escape Ox, and then see where that gets us. Yeah, I could put my opponent to three and have a croc sign play, but I think we'd rather draw a few extra cards here, and then I can still maybe escape Croxa next turn, although I guess I will need a few more cards in Graveyard. If I bring back Croxa, my opponent falls to three. Don't have any good attacks. And next turn my opponent can start sacking food to gain life. So I don't think Croxa is the way to go here. Alright, so currently three cards in Graveyard. I guess I can stomp the token. And then attack with Mire Triton. And if they want a sack of foods, they'll have fewer food for next turn. Seems okay. And I'll play Mire Triton over Bone Crusher Giants as we get to scry more with the third chapter from Timurt Calls the Dead next turn. And the uh, 2 1 Death Touch can attack into Lost Struck Beast at least. Probably should have held the land to maybe let me play Kicked Shade out of the graveyard next turn if we don't find anything else. Alright, and my opponent concedes. Bit of an early concession since they definitely weren't dead on board. They could still sacrifice their food tokens to gain a bit of life back and maybe go digging for more action. But we were going to get to scry quite a bit with our third chapter, and we still had a few escape creatures to replay out of the graveyard. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Lurus of the Dream Den deck. So it could be the blue-black cycling deck, in which case this ends okay. And then I probably start by fetching up a Swamp with Passage, and then I'll be guaranteed 2-drop into 3-drop and have double black for Rankle. Do see a Wind Robber. Find target for Stomp. Alright, can play Mountain for now. I'll just do this now. Shredded Sail's a better answer for Thought Thief, which doesn't die to Stomp. A Ruined Crab also survives 2 damage. So the plan is probably to just play Giant here. Ooh, double Ruined Crab. That's pretty scary. And sadly we drew the Ox instead of having it milled. Alright, there's Croxa at least. Which we can already escape. Opponent passes, so they could be holding Drown in the Loch. So I've got a few options. Now that we drew Heartless Act, one of those is also to just attack and then in the opponent's upkeep play Heartless Act so they can't leverage their counter spells as much. So let's start by playing this untapped so I can potentially Shredded Sails at instant speed as well. And if they're placed end of turn Thought Thief, we can just Shredded Sails and then Heartless Act one of the crabs. 
So I'll put an upkeep stop. And then upkeep, kill crab. And those get drowned, but now the opponent had to spend two mana in their turn. So they don't appear to be holding a Thought Thief. And now I'll get a chance to escape Croxa. And I do want to slowly start emptying my hands for Ox, so probably fine to stomp my opponent's face. Could also decide to play Rankle to make sure we get rid of a Crab, which is also reasonable. So how many cards do I have left? 33, so we're almost halfway. Opponent's at 14. I guess Rankle applying pressure is kind of nice too here. Yeah, sure, and then I can discard Ox to Rankle's trigger. So each player discards a card, each player sacrifices a creature. And we'll keep Rankle. Fable Passage gonna mill me for 6, glad we got rid of one of the cramps, otherwise that would have been 12. Alright, and my opponent just concedes, so their hands must not have been very good. Maybe no answers for Rankle, which was going to kill them. Although they could try to put lures in hand to then replay stuff out of the graveyard on the following turn. But yeah, if they didn't have any counter spells for Croxa or Ox of Agonos, they were going to be in trouble. We even had a Skyclave Shade to replay out of the graveyard. So yeah, that's a pretty good example of how the blue-black mill matchup usually goes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hands. Two cheap removal spells and then some escape creatures. We're missing a way to fill the graveyard at the moment, but there's a few of those in the deck. Don't need a second mauling. Our better draws include Mire Triton and Timurit Calls the Dead. Opponent on blue green, Vine Gecko, so could be some sort of kicker deck. Yeah, we'll stomp the Gecko. Next turn, most likely play Giants. Rusa Drakes for one mana. And our claim the wastes, so. Roost of Drakes, not a card type we're very good at interacting with. So that could definitely give us some issues, although we do have some removal to kill the first couple Drakes. Chronicler finds Bubble Snare. Shredded Sails sadly doesn't deal with enchantments. Could kill a Drake at some point. For now, probably gonna attack, stomp Chronicler, and then play Croxa. I guess we can play Croxa first. Opponent ditches into the Royal, which is also a good answer to an escaped Croxa. And then this says whenever you cast a kicked spell. So I probably just want to kill it before they get a chance to kick anything. If they play Bubble Snare for one mana, they don't get a Drake token, so we could still see a kicked Bubble Snare. And this turn, I've got a couple options. 
could play Bonecrusher Giants, play Mauling Tapped, could play Skyclave Shade and then use Shredded Sails to kill the Drake token. And then I could still decide to play Mauling Tapped because we do have Ox we eventually want to play, which kind of wants me to empty my hands and hit my land drops. So out of all those options, I guess I kind of like Shade plus Sails the most, just because that helps me empty my hand faster. And then I guess I'll wait on playing the sails. Could get punished if my opponent attacks, I try and sails and they have like two ways of putting counters on it with the inscription. That's gonna be kicked Sproutling getting back something from the graveyard. Makes another Drake. Yes, Sproutling is a very good one to in this type of matchup. Gets back Reclaim. And then we'll kill the Drake, I think. Thirst can kill another token. So I probably start by attacking with Shade. Potent probably takes three. And then we'll play Giants, kill the Drake with Thirsts. There's also an argument for playing Heartless Act, so if I draw an untapped land, I can still Thirst for one mana and play Ox in the same turn, which is not possible with Heartless Act. Another Chronicler. So we're getting kind of close to escaping Croxa. And drawing Fabled Passage would let me Heartless Act and escape Croxa, which would be ideal. Ooh, Vast would Surge. It's a scary card as well. Alright. So, let me attack with both. My opponent double blocks Giants, we can Heartless Act. And if they trade for Shade, I can just bring it back after playing my lands. Could also decide to let a creature go to the graveyard to escape Croxa, which is also a reasonable play here. Opponent just takes seven. And then... Yeah, I'll probably play a land and pass with the plan of Heartless acting. Definitely a close call with just playing the Ox. Goes for a kicked fast with Surge. They first get a Drake. So I have to Heartless Act before they get all the counters. So do I just kill the Drake or the Sproutling? Sproutling would turn into a 5-5. Five five, so that's probably what I want to kill here. Because I can still attack into a 4-4 with my Bone Crusher. And we'll see if they want to attack. Maybe one creature gets in there, but it's kind of risky with my opponent at 4. So the Chronicler does get in. Picked up a land, so... I should probably Ox before attacking. So Giants is going to force a trade for a Drake token. I guess we'll go with Triton for now. And then next turn I can maybe make him discard two cards. Find Gecko into another kicked surge. But now they're just dead to Croxa triggers. 
Yeah, it was a close game. The blue-green kicker deck put up a good fight. But it's gonna be death by Croxa. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Probably get a second swamp right away. So we have double black for Rankle. Innkeeper will get stomped as soon as we get the chance. So this is the Gruul Adventure deck it is. Brushfire is going to hit pretty hard. Although we can also kill it with Elspeth's Nightmare. So let me fetch Swamp here. And then this is on cast, so we just want to kill Innkeeper now, I think. And next turn we'll Nightmare. Alright, Evolving Wilds means we're gonna take five. Deciding to take a bit more damage to make sure my opponent doesn't draw any extra cards. They might be holding their own stomp from Bone Crusher. So the card I'm hoping to steal with the Nightmare next turn is like a Great Henge or an Ember Cleave. And we've got a pretty good chance of sniping one of them. Alright, there's Ember Cleave, which is probably the card I have to take. Leave them with Dragonfire and Smashing. Hagra Mauling, pretty nice answer for Lobstruck Beast. Could also decide to Rankle, although sacrificing a creature doesn't look good. Can't double Croxa, since we're missing the second red source. I could Croxa and then play a Skyclave Shade, and then take a bit of a beating from Beasts. I think I'm just okay killing the Beasts. And do it now so they can top deck a Great Henge and play it, thanks to the discount. Opponent plays Smashing. And then now, probably a good time for Croxa. They could decide to Dragonfire Croxa so it gets exiled before it goes to the graveyard, but then they have to discard the other card they have in hand. And with a backup Croxa, we don't really mind. Alright, opponent does exile Croxa. They had another Smashing in hand, fair enough. And we'll play Shade. So my opponent's top decking. They don't have a large creature in play to leverage cleave or henge. So I don't hate my spot. Bone Crusher, not a bad draw. Simmered calls the dead. So not a great spot for Rankle. Stomp can just kill the 1-1, one -one, or I can just play a giant to trade for their giant, hopefully, if they don't cleave me. Or I can get Timurid Calls of Dead going. The 2-2 doesn't line up great against Giants, but it does hold off the 1-1 at least. I think I'm playing Bone Crusher here. Try and mitigate the amount of damage we take from the opposing Giant. Alright, Scavenging Ooze is unfortunate. Can get rid of my Shade, grow up to a 3-3 so it doesn't die to another Stomp. And yeah, that's going to prevent any future graveyard shenanigans. So the long-term plan is to stomp the 1-1 one -one and then Rankle to sacrifice the Ooze. I guess we've got another Rankle. Although I should probably stick to the plan. Yeah. It's unfortunate that we're not hitting our land drops here. So if my opponent draws another... Creature, my plan's not gonna work. 
I guess we'll kill before they get to attack. In case they have Amber Cleave, so they're forced to tap out for it. Alright, so Ooze up to a 5-5. Five, five. And it's time for Rankle. And I'm fine with... Let's see. Probably just Sacrifice and no Discard. Although Discard could be okay still. Although we do have a Croxa to make him Discard as well. I think we just choose Sacrifice and nothing else. And then next turn I can either Rankle if they play Problematic Creature or go Timurt Calls of Death plus Croxa. So they might have a pretty reactive hand by now. So we can play Croxa, play Timurt. Or I can also play Giant, which might be better than Timurt Calls of Dead, although I guess I need to fill my graveyard to escape Croxa here. Discards a land. So they could still have a Henge or a Cleave in hand, potentially. And we'll get rid of Timurt Calls the Dead. Alright, it's time to escape Croxa. Get rid of Nightmare. I guess I maybe should have actually been exiling my creatures to make opposing scavenging oozes worse and leave my enchantments for Timurt Calls the Dead. Alright, let's escape Croxa. And I guess get rid of my creatures as much as possible to an extent. Alright, and my opponent explodes. Yeah, they were not in a great spot once we escape Croxa, empty-handed, and still have some nice leftovers with Rankle and Giant, so managed to dismantle the Red-Green Adventures deck as well, which should be a decent matchup as long as we can prevent one of those legendary artifacts from hitting the battlefield. Got to see a nice variety of matchups, including some of the more popular decks. So I do think Ragdos is a pretty well positioned deck at the moment. I kind of view the metagame as level 1 being the Demir Rogue decks and the Gruul Adventure deck, which did quite well last weekend. And then level 2 to try and beat level 1 is going to be Ragdos Midrange. And then on level 3 to kind of go over the top of Ragdos Midrange, I see some of the ramp decks like Teamer Ramp, which is going to be good against the level 2 decks, but might struggle against level 1 being Demir Rogues and Gruul Aggro, which can potentially disrupt the ramp decks enough or go underneath them and kill them before they manage to set up. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.